Hello my friends and thank you for the amazing support you have given me and thank you for joining me for this artsy project as a guest designer for All and Create. Now I live in the north of Sweden which gave me a few days waiting for the new release so I decided to start a homemade 8x8 inch disc bound journal dedicated to All and Create and primarily Janet Klein's storybook character. So while I waited, I used older stamp sets to create the front cover to this journal. We will make the front cover and with the new release we will also make the first page. But for now I have Vow's clear super fine embossing powder along with this favorite stamp set called Good Book, number 415. I have a 7 by 7 inch panel of thick watercolor paper and it will become my background. I take the two sentiments from the good book stamp set and place them in one corner of my panel, saying get lost in a good book and the word read. My plan is to frame this soon to be background with those words, so I stamp in Versafine onyx black ink, cover with Wow's clear embossing powder and melt with my heat tool. When something is embossed, it resists most mediums, so whatever ink or paint I decide to use, these words will stay put. I continue placing those words around my panel quite randomly, focusing on the corners and allowing some space on the sides. And I do the same procedure as before, heat embossing my frame around the panel. Now let's get inky. I will use dilution spray inks in lemon zest and cut grass mixed with distress oxide spray in rustic wilderness and spray stain in twisted citron. I also add a mica spray stain in bubbling cauldron. I spray first with water and then my lemon zest was clogged so I used the straw to get it in the middle and then I add the green sprays with more water and yellow on top. I don't know why, but I just love to use sprays for a background and see what I get. I add more water as needed and finally I try to spray another clogged spray in shimmering fresh lime. But as before, I resort to using the straw and flicking the ink in splashes onto my background. I will let this background dry naturally and move on to stamping. I bring out the same stamp set but this time I don't emboss. I just stamp the pile of books in a waterproof ink and after filming I stamp many many more books. My background has dried overnight and now I bring out my anti-static powder bag that gets rid of any tackiness because I intend to heat emboss some more and I don't want the powder to stick to anything other than my stamping and I am going to go all in on this panel. This stamp set is called Celestial Navigation number 398. I want to stamp and emboss only parts of this stamp, so I ink up just a part and take the stamp in my hand and press down where I want this amazing pattern. Then I cover it with Wow's clear super fine embossing powder and melt. And then, then I do that procedure again and again until I'm happy. While I stamp and heat emboss, I want to thank you for spending some crafty time with me and shutting out the world for a brief moment. One could think I was done with this background, if you didn't know me. 
So, I am going to add even more texture using Versafine Rain Rainforest Green Ink. The ink is permanent, and once again, I just want a little part of the stamp called Scripted Thoughts, number 595. I stamp that text in dark green ink, here and there, until I'm happy. I have this well-used stamp set called Time's Up, number 325, and I only want the typewriter, so I stamp it with Versafine Onyx Black ink, the same ink as I have used throughout this video. Next, I have brought out a rainbow of Distress Oxide inks to color my books, because as I said before, I have many piles of books to color, but I will only show a few here. I'm using the colors Mustard Seed, Ripe Persimmon, Picked Raspberries, Wilted Violet and Villainous Potion. And I don't do anything fancy at all, I just color the books in these happy colors. For the book pages I bring out a light brown called tea dye and I mix it quite randomly with the yellow ink and water until I get the right color for my book pages. So let's create even more texture on my background and at first I just put water in my hand and flick big drops randomly. I let the water react with the ink and pick up color with a paper towel and give it a quick dry with my heat tool. Next I bring out this dress paint in rustic wilderness and flick droplets of paint from an acrylic block. I love the green splatters and while I am in the mood I bring out black soot distress paint, put some on an acrylic block and make gorgeous black splatters. I want to color the typewriter and this image already has a lot of black shadows built in so I bring out silver distress paint and color in the typewriter. I give my splatters a quick dry and then I do what I always do. I blend in Rustic Wilderness Distress Oxide ink from the sides to frame my panel. And then I bring out Archival Black Soot and do the same again for that dark frame I favor. I have already used this good book stamp set a lot, but now it is time to stamp and color the reading girl. I stamp her in Versafine Onyx Black ink, and then I bring out my Prima Complexion watercolor palette to give her a skin tone. I stamped two girls because I can't resist to paper piece her flower eye. For her outfit I use this dress inks in picked raspberry, carved pumpkin and mustard seed and I start by giving her a pink hat. I put undiluted ink where I want shadows and fill in the rest with more diluted ink. I color in her shirt with carved pumpkin and I also put some orange at the base of her hair and fill in the rest of the hair with yellow ink. I give her pink pants and orange shoes, and last, I color in the petals around the other girl's eye with orange and yellow, and I will add that later. All and Create has washi tape, and it's the only washi I use because of the artsy words. This time, I will use this black tape, number 5 to ground my images 
on the background, but I don't want a whole piece, so I tear some pieces off. And when I am happy, I use glue to make sure the washi will stay in place. When I told you I stamped and colored a lot of books, I wasn't exaggerating, and I start gluing them in tall piles on my background. When I have a bunch of pile books, I put foam tape behind the typewriter and glue it down on my background. Next, I glue that flower eye onto my girl, and then I try to show you that it actually adds dimension. I put foam tape behind her and glue her down sitting on the typewriter. I have a lot of books still and I glue them together in tall piles. I glue a couple of book piles behind the girl and then I put foam tape behind my tall piles of books and add the piles in the gaps I left before and the popped up piles of books add so much dimension to the whole piece. My last detail on this front cover is to fill in the flower eye on the girl with some glossy accents and then I move on to Peter Pan. So for these storybook characters I change things up by coloring with my Uhuhu alcohol markers on cans on paper called the wall. I stamp in Memento Tuxedo Black ink. I start with Captain Hook, and I love the kind expression he has on his face. I also stamp a barrel and a pirate flag. I do the same for Peter Pan, stamping him in Memento Tuxedo Black Ink, along with the map to Neverland. So, let's color, starting with Captain Hook, using three markers to give him a skin tone, going from light to dark, and back again. I use three shades of blue for its pants and two yellow markers for its pointy thingy. <laughs> Next, I use four shades of red on his jacket, trying to give the image some depth with the shadows. I almost never color with black, because it isn't really a color and it can look very flat, so I use three warm grey tones for his hat and the same red markers as I used on the jacket on the feather in the hat. I give Captain Hook some warm grey boots and use a light grey and a colorless blender to add some shadow to his white shirt. 
Finally, I use a gold gel pen to add gold to his cuffs and that pointy thingy. I color the barrels very straightforward with three brown markers. Next I use a beige marker to add a worn look to the flag. When I color Peter Pan I do pretty much the same for his skin tone, but for his green outfit I use three shades of green trying to leave a highlight with that almost yellow green marker. For his hair I use three shades of yellow. Finally I give him some red boots. After coloring his feather in his hat red, I move on to the Neverland map. And I use a brown marker along with a colorless blender to darken the edges. I also use a blue and a green marker for the rest of the map. Finally I color a sign saying the Lost Boys Hideout with three shades of brown. Now let's do the background and I have a piece of mixed media cardstock in a cream color. I roll the sides of the paper on a handle of a brush to get that feeling of a scrolled up map. Then I start distressing the paper, tearing out pieces and making tears in the edges. And I also use my scissors to scrape the sides of the paper. When I have abused the paper enough, I bring out vintage photo distress ink and I blend it in from the sides to give it an even more of an old look. Finally, I bring out black suit distress ink to darken the edges even more and bring out those tears and rub rough edges. From looking at that Neverland map, I could roughly sketch out the Neverland Island on masking paper and I placed that Neverland mask in the center of my background. After making sure it's in place, I use a waterproof black fine liner to trace around the island. Next I have a selection of blue distress oxide inks in tumbled glass, salty ocean and prize ribbon. Starting with tumbled glass and a makeup brush, I blend the lightest blue on the mask and around it. When I have a smooth coat of the lightest blue, I change color to salty ocean, blending on and around the mask, but not as far out as the tumbled glass. And finally, I blend prized ribbon just around the edges of my island.
When I finally get to pull off the mask, I feel so satisfied with my Neverland background. I lost the black lines around the island in my ink blending, so I do it again off camera. And then it's time to color the island itself. I get to bring out my mini distress inks and I choose my favorite combo, Twisted Citron and Rustic Wilderness. But I also add the dark brownish ink, Forest Moss. I start by adding some inks to my glass mat. And at first I start with Twisted Citron directly to paper, but then I change my mind and decide to do the coloring wet on wet, where I give the whole island a coat of water, and then I drop in Twisted Citron and see it move. Then I do the same with Rustic Wilderness, but I use it more sparingly. And finally I drop in the dark green forest moss here and there on the island. And I love seeing the inks move and blend with this easy and satisfying technique. The next step is to glue my map onto a black page for my disc bound journal. I put several layers of foam tape behind it and glue it down. I glue down three barrels flat on the map and then I put foam tape behind the pirate flag and glue it down as well. I put foam tape behind the mini Neverland map and glue it in the left corner before I glue down Captain Hook with foam tape. Peter Pan himself gets a layer of foam tape behind him and I put him standing on the two barrels and I glue down the Lost Boys hideout sign on the island. We have sentiments left to do and I choose three, one saying let's go to Neverland and never come back until tomorrow never ends. I use Manila cardstock so it won't be stark white and I use brown Versafine clear pinecone ink but I also use my black ink pad in a swiping motion catching the edges with the black ink. And then I heat emboss it with WOW's clear embossing powder. So the sentiment is dark brown in the middle and black around the edges. My next two sentiments say I'm not young enough to know everything. And for Captain Hook I chose ARG. Such an aggressive sentiment for that sweet looking captain and I heat emboss them the same way as the first sentiment. For me the brown softens the black and the black edges help the words stand out but I'm not sure anybody else would see it. You know I had to distress and age these sentiments as well, so I start tearing the edges and when they look worn enough I bring out my vintage photo distress ink and I go around the edges. And when I'm done with that, you all know what's next. Black Suit Archival Ink frames my sentiments perfectly. I glue down my sentiments with foam tape behind them. My absolutely last detail is to smush some vintage photo ink on my mat and use the ink and water to give Hook, Peter Pan and the barrels a little shadow. And now, my friends, these all and create mixed media disc bound art journal pages are finished but I intend to make more pages soon and you find links to everything in the description box below. Thank you so much for spending some time with me. Until the next time, happy crafting!